Hello, this is Unit 1, Lesson 6. We're looking at inverse relations and composition. So, uh, let's do a definition first. An inverse relation. So, two relations are inverses of each other if each ordered pair of the relation is switched. So that the domain of the original relation is now the range of the inverse. And the range of the original relation is now the domain of the inverse. So, if there is a point AB in the original relation, the inverse relation will have the point BA. Okay, so that defines what it means to be an inverse as far as what we're going to do in this lesson. If f of x is a function, its inverse, we use f looks like you're saying to the negative 1, but that means f inverse of x. That negative 1 is a symbol for inverse, not the reciprocal. Okay, so if f of x is a function, its inverse, f inverse of x, is a function if it passes the vertical line test. Any relation is a function if it passes a vertical line test on a graph. So if we find the inverse of a function, if the inverse is a function, it will pass a vertical line test. Okay. So there's a few different ways we're going to look at this. First, we're going to just take points from these relations and just switch them. Okay? So for this first function, f of x, remember x is the domain, y is the range. Okay? So to find the inverse of this relation, we're going to switch x and y. So for f inverse of x, the domain is now 5, 6. And the range is now negative 2, negative 1. We switched x and y. We found the inverse. Okay? So again, this domain becomes the range of the inverse. This range becomes the domain of the inverse. Okay, try the next two, and I'll have the answer when you unpause the video. All right, so all you're doing is switching X and Y. The first thing you're looking at when you're finding an inverse is that you switch X and Y. The domain of the function becomes the range of the inverse, right? All right, that's the first step. So if you got these, great job. We're going to move on to finding the inverse of a graph. So given a graph, we could give you a, a function that you could type into your calculator. And you get the graph. You should be able to make a quick sketch of that graph and then find the inverse the way I'm going to do right now. All right. So you can find the inverse of a graph the same way we just found the inverse, inverses of the above relations. If you can find a couple of points that you can see, a couple of integral points, and write those down. So this one to the left is the point 0, negative 4. Then I have the point 2, 0. 
then I have the point 4, 4. Well, that one might not help me too much because, well, we'll see in a second, okay? So the point 0, negative 4 on the function will be negative 4, 0 on the inverse. 2, 0 on the function becomes 0, 2 on the inverse. 4, 4 goes to 4, 4. So like I said, doesn't help us a whole lot. But that's important because that's where these two graphs are going to intersect. So you're going to graph this inverse now. All right. So the inverse is the point negative 4, 0. 0, 2, 4, 4. And we're going to draw that line right there. Okay. The other thing to note, if you're a fan of the geometry and doing reflections, when you find the graph of an inverse, or excuse me, when you graph the inverse function, okay, the inverse of a function, it will always reflect over the line y equals x. So go ahead and try the next one the same way we did this one and see how you can do. So look at what was an absolute value function. We graphed the inverse of that function. Okay, I found some points. I switched x and y, plotted the points, and went ahead and graphed it. Okay, so one thing I didn't do on the first one on our linear function was determine if the inverse is a function. Okay, and on the graph, again, we do that by seeing if it passes a vertical line test. All right, so I'm going to use red on the left here. So remember, vertical line test. Can I draw a line through the function and not touch it more than once? Okay, so this green function here on the left. That's a line. That's a function. We know it's not going to intersect more than once. So yes, inverse is a function. How about when we found the inverse of our absolute value? Well, let's see. Uh-oh. Uh that's passing it just about everywhere, okay? So in this case, the inverse is not a function. All right, so finding the inverse of a graph. Let's move on to find the inverse algebraically. This starts the same way that the, all the others did. We switch x and y. First, we've got to get it to be y and x. So remember, f of x or g of x or h of x, you can just write as y, and then you write the function as y equals. Now you switch x and y. Then solve it for y, or I like to say resolve it for y. So I add 2 to both sides, and then I multiply both sides by 3. Be careful with this. Multiplying both sides by 3. That means on the left, I get 3x plus 6. Distribute that 3 to the 2. equals y, or we can rewrite it now, y equals 3x plus 6. Now, what you should do is rewrite it in function notation. So now you'd say f inverse of x equals 3x plus 6. Okay? Finding the inverse algebraically. Rewrite it with y. 
switch x and y, and then resolve for y. You will get the inverse function. If you graphed these, they should be reflections over the line y equals x. Okay. If you feel comfortable with this, go ahead and try the next two. I'll do one more example. I'll do g. But if you feel comfortable, go ahead and try the next two, and you can check your answers. So let's look at g of x. y equals negative 2x plus 5. Switch x and y. x equals negative 2y plus 5. x minus 5 equals negative 2y. Divide by negative 2. I'm going to get negative 1 half x plus 5 over 2 equals y. Rewriting it in function notation, it's going to be g. g inverse of x equals negative 1 half x plus 5 over 2. Okay, now pause the video, try h of x. Try to find the inverse of h of x, and I'll have the answer when you come back. Okay, check your answer. Here's h of h inverse of x. Again, be careful with your distribution, be careful with your negative signs. All right, so this is all finding inverses. Now, let's look on the back at composition of functions. This is another kind of operation that we chose to do separately because of its relationship with finding inverses. Okay. Ultimately, you can use composition to verify that the inverse you found is in fact the inverse of that function. All right. So we have an f of x and a g of x. I'm asking you what g, and there's this funny looking circle here. Okay. This is a circle. This is not multiplication. This is composition. Another way to write this is g of f of x. That's how this is read. g of f of x. A lot of f's there, okay? g of f of x. So what that means is you take f and you put it inside of g wherever you see an x. So what I like to do is I take f and I write f, x minus 5, and I write parentheses around it. And then I look at g and I say, what's the function of g? Well, g is x squared. Well, I'm substituting x minus 5 for x. That's what this notation means over here. I'm substituting f of x for anywhere I see an x in g. So all that means is that's squared. So g of f of x equals parentheses x minus 5 quantity squared. Okay? So do the same thing, but do it for f of g. Remember, this means I'm taking g and putting it inside of f. So take a minute, pause the video, and try to do this one on your own. All right. So now we're doing it the opposite way. I take x squared, put it in for that x, and then it's minus 5. Okay, you could just simplify and say it's x squared minus 5. That's composition. The biggest mistake people make is they want to do multiplication with this. It's an open circle. Okay? Be very careful. We'll tell you on a quiz or a test if you're not sure. Mr. Hilliard, is this an open circle? Is this a dot? I won't tell you what it means, but I will tell you what it's supposed to, to be, what the symbol is. All right, so that's composition. Now, we can use composition to verify that two functions are inverses of each other or they're not inverses of each other. Okay? 
you have to do this with composition. This concept is using composition to show two functions are inverse or show that they're not inverses. So to do this, you need to say g of h of x. And then you need to do h of g of x. When you reduce these, you plug them in and reduce them, you should just get x when you're done for each of these. Okay? So g of h of x. So I got h. I'm going to put that inside of g. And now I'm going to simplify. 4 times a half is 2. x, 4 times 2. That's not a half. Goofball. Hilliard. 1 over 4. Okay. So the 4s cancel. You distribute. 4 times 2 is 8. So I get x plus 8 minus 8. I'm left with x. So that's good. You have to do both. Okay. So then I do g. So 4x minus 8. Put that inside of h. 1 fourth times 4x, I get x. 1 fourth times negative 8, I get 2. Plus 2. These cancel, I'm left with x. So, yes. These are inverses. Another way you can see this problem is we'll tell you to find the inverse of something. You find the inverse and then you use composition to verify that. Okay? So, now remember, you might not always they might not always work. Okay? Try the same thing with R and S, and I will have the answer when you unpause the video. All right, so these both reduce to X plus eight. Now, the fact that they're the same thing doesn't really matter, okay? They need to reduce to X, and they didn't. They both need to reduce to X. So actually, once you got to this point here, you could stop. Because one of them didn't reduce to x, they're not going to be inverses no matter what this one reduces to. Okay, so using composition to verify two functions or inverses of each other. The skill is using composition. You can't show this by just doing the inverse. All right, so as always, make a note of any questions you have, bring this to class, and we'll see you next time.